We've, we've graduated the big leagues now. If Sasquatch is out here, I'll take a Sasquatch. If Sasquatch is out here, will you please turn it on? I drove six hours to come see you guys. I'd really rather it not be for nothing. I know, look at you. <laughs> Something fantasy. I'm, I'm very concerned about we'll, we'll finally get some good footage and then I'm gonna rip ass. I legitimately look like the Grinch when he decides not to go to the party. Words of the wise, this is why you don't allow him to choose the costumes for the period dress up. He's already on a whole different level. stories about him huh. that the sound that he makes have you heard allegedly what kind of sound he makes is it more like a, a little chittering noise also if anyone that's watching this is wondering what the hell's on my finger um don't get cocky when you're using a mandolin uh without a guard no kidding that happened to you literally mm -hmm. battle wounds from a mandolin yeah i was slicing up pickles oh. you know to make it a little more embarrassing i was slicing up um because <laughs> you know, I'm a fat guy and I love my potatoes. Every location that we investigate will be ranked on our completely comprehensively put together and not at all sloppily made up ranking system of zero to five spooks. Now you'll notice at the bottom from zero to 0 0.5 spooks that basically nothing is happening on the scale. So let's just ignore that and start at one. If a place is one to two out of five spooks, that means that there's some suspicious activity, a couple of sounds, maybe some uneasy feelings, just enough to make you suspicious that something could be there, but nothing definitive. Moving up the scale to 2.5 to three out of five spooks, this is when a location has provided enough evidence to where you're starting to get the nervous sweats. If it's up to three out of five spooks, that means you've gone past the nervous sweats phase and you're now into the part where the fear is starting to slowly set in. At 3.5 spooks, that means the location is starting to get into the territory of being legitimately terrifying. Once you've reached 4 out of 5 spooks, this is when the location has become truly next level and you think that you are legitimately in danger. Moving up to the top tier of our scale, at 4.5 out of 5 spooks, this is when a location has become so terrifying it is your personal hell on earth and you would rather see your grandmother in a bikini than ever go back to this location. Up at the tippy top of the scale at 5 out of 5 you've gone past the stage of being terrified. You've lost all sense of reasoning and now you are legitimately begging for your life. Alright so we're here at the Walking Horse Hotel. Uh, this is over here in Wartrace, Tennessee. Allegedly it is the third most haunted uh, hotel in Tennessee. So. We're about to see what she's got. The Walking Horse Hotel was first built in 1917 as a railroad hotel and was named the Hotel Overall. In 1933, the Hotel Overall was purchased by Floyd and Olive Carruthers. In the late 1930s, it was the base for a group of horse trainers who eventually created the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration, an annual horse show held for the first time in 1939. Because of this, the name was changed to the Walking Horse Hotel. Floyd Carruthers died in 1944, but the hotel was owned and operated by Olive Carruthers until 1958. The building was sold several times, then renovated in 1995 and reopened as the hotel overall. It was closed years later and renovated again. This cycle would go on and on for many years. But allegedly, the Walking Horse Hotel has a dark history behind it leading to it being known as possibly the third most haunted hotel in Tennessee. One of the reasons for this goes back many years ago on Halloween night. According to the story, one of the rooms in the second floor was set up to look like an exorcism was taking place. One of the staff members thought it would be a good idea to play audio from a real live exorcism. Sometime later, a plumber was downstairs in the basement trying to get some work done when he says that he was grabbed and pulled by his ankle. This alleged demon has been known as Mr. Nasty. 
while Tim was actually doing his job and paying attention to the tour given to us by the current owner, I had a different topic in mind. Are you like <laughs> Spider-Man, just leaving little trails behind? You gotta wonder about that. Like, when Spider-Man swings through the city, mm. does he just leave <laughs> webs everywhere? He has And then to. does the city have to clean that up? He would have to. Behind. What an ass. <laughs> Upon first uploading this pilot episode, I had actually forgotten there was already an answer to this question. Those of us that grew up in the 90s grew up on what is quite possibly still the most definitive piece of Spider-Man media out there, and I will die on that hill. But in the show, it's actually explained that Peter has his webs set to dissolve after a certain amount of time that they've been sitting around. So this question has been answered. <laughs> we are on our way to Mr. Nasty's room. I got some stuff to say to you, sir. Or lady, you know, I guess, you know, it's, it's 2022. We don't want to assume anything. Well, I don't, I, I don't think potential demons have genders. Did you just assume? I assume. That the demon doesn't have a gender? I, I did. It's a dangerous game, friendo. One wrong move and we'll get canceled. So this is, is this it? No, it's the next one down. Next one down? Are you sure? Yeah. It has two windows in it. Okay. So this is the stinker's room. So this potentially negative entity has been nicknamed Mr. Nasty. I got some stuff to say to him. So we're going to do a spirit box session in here. The first tool that we'll be using is called the spirit box. How the spirit box works is that it sweeps through radio channels so quickly it causes white noise, which allegedly spirits can manipulate as either energy or as a way to talk to us. Because the spirit box sweeps through radio channels so quickly, and every millisecond it's going through multiple channels, if you hear what sounds like a cohesive sentence or a few words in the same voice, Either dozens and dozens of different radio channels are working in unison to make it sound like someone's talking, or a spirit on the other side is actually trying to get your attention. Mr. Nasty? If you don't want us up here, let me know. Is that a truck going by? Yeah, one just went by. Tell you what, if you don't want us up here, make a noise and we'll leave because it's hot as shit up here. If you don't want us up here, you can use the energy from this box, this little screeching annoying box, you can use the energy from that to communicate with us. There's no activity on this thing. Mr. Nasty, sounds a bit like you're all talk, if you even exist at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go talk to a spirit that I actually want to talk to. Possibly the most prominent spirit in the Walking Horse Hotel is that of a small girl named Emily. As the story goes, Emily was in the third floor room in the corner of the building when she was either pushed out of the window or fell. The owner informed us that during an EVP session, she received a spirit's voice telling her that the girl chased the ball and fell out the window. This ultimately led to her early death. Emily? Hello, Emily. We have heard nothing but good things about you. We would really like for you to Speak to us, or make a noise. We brought a toy for you. We did, actually. We brought you a little figurine here we're gonna put down next to your other toys. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on a device that may sound scary, but what it'll do is it'll allow you to use energy and talk to us. We're trying to talk to Emily. Emily, are you there? What was that? 
while we were in Emily's room on the third floor, our audio recorder in the basement picked up these unexplained sounds. Tell you what, I, I, I'm, I'm very concerned about what we'll finally get some good footage, and then right when we're getting the good footage, I'm gonna rip ass. Because, I, dude, I'm so gassy right now. I, I'm holding it in. You ate all that chili. I ate chili for two days straight. Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> more afraid of that right now than the actual <laughs> potential spirits here. What do you think about that, Mr. Nasty? Well, you, you did it right in Emily's room, too. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Emily. We want to avoid that room because there's wasps and everything in there. And, uh, I think this is the room with the World War II and Ooh. Vietnam vets. An unconfirmed story on the internet claims that one night there was a veteran staying in one of the rooms. It's unclear if the veteran is from World War II or was in the Vietnam War, but as the story goes, he had a bad PTSD episode and went on a violent rampage, shooting multiple guests. Are there any veterans here with us? We heard a story that there was an unfortunate man who when he came home from Vietnam had a, a bad PTSD episode and allegedly shot at least four residents. So whoever that could have been. Are you here with us right now? If you are here with us, I have a device that may help you speak to us. At this time, we pick up on our spirit box a voice sounding like it says, please help. Now, logical explanations for this could be just multiple radio channels working together, but still, it's interesting. Is there anyone here with us? Garbage? Are you saying we are garbage? We're not garbage, fuck you. Are there any Vietnam or World War II veterans here with us? We have a lot of respect for what you did. So if there's anyone in here who was in the Vietnam War, maybe? In the Vietnam War. In the Vietnam War. In the Vietnam War. Maybe. The recorder from Mr. Nasty's room. Oh yeah, that dickhead. Mr. Nasty, we're coming for you. Oh, Mr. Nasty. Oh, yeah, let's not do sing-songy version saying that. <laughs> Uh, what's he gonna do? He's weak sauce. He may want to come, like, you know, tickle bubbles. Do I? He may come to tickle our bubbles. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Nasty. Hello, Gopna. Why are we talking to him in a Cockney accent? I don't know. I feel like the accent that we, when I say we, I mean me, I feel like the accent that I'm doing is super offensive. Mr. Nasty, if you're in here, you better say something into that box. Because you're kind of disappointing us right now. You're supposed to be this big, bad, scary demon, and you're not doing nothing. You're doing shit. Take a deuce or hop off the pot there, buddy. Yeah. If you're some big, bad demon, you got to make yourself known there, bud. You know what? This is our room now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And if you don't like it... You can just leave the door right there. If you don't like it, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you.
<laughs> Never heard that one before. I can think of. Oh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> I'm Mr. Nasty. I'm Dirty Dan. Hearing what sounds like footsteps, possibly up on the second floor. You know, it, it very well could also be residual big raindrops outside, maybe hitting the tin roof. That I bet you that's probably one of those. Yeah. Because they only hear it in the music hall. Yeah, and this has the tin roofs over this area. So, potential footstep sounds, um, more than likely, we just had a large thunderstorm and it's most likely just large raindrops hitting the roof. So we are going to uh, temporarily stop the investigation to go take a quick break outside because, to be quite honest, it's really fucking hot in here. Okay, so we're taking a small break out here uh, while we have a static night cam set up. Uh, and we have noticed a, a scratch on Tim's arm. Now, just to reference, Tim, you are saying this scratch was not on your arm before. It was and it's actually currently raised, so it is a fresh scratch. Okay, so it's a single scratch, and there is literally nothing in there that has sharp edges that we could have scraped or scratched your arm on. We have not been in any tight areas, any small confined areas, nothing. It's all very wide open. I have not even been close to any walls. I haven't touched any walls, nothing like that. Maybe this is uh, from Mr. Nasty. It could be. We're, we're, I was antagonizing him a little bit. Many of those out there who do paranormal investigations believe that scratches are from demonic presences. And while we don't have any concrete evidence to debunk this idea, it's also just as likely that sometimes you run into things and cause scratches without noticing. You know what, Mr. Nasty? We ain't done with you yet. You know what they say, like prison rules, yep. you always go after the big guy first. <laughs> Come at me, bitch. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go on a little solo adventure. Taking my walkie with me. Was that you? Go ahead. I said, was that you? Yeah, I stood up from the chair. I'm gonna run out to the car real quick to get the, uh, see if one of those other USB C's I have will work. All right, I'm making my way back into the room that has the chair, oop, almost tripped, that has the, uh, the chair in the middle. When this episode first aired, I was unaware of what this sound could possibly be, as I had never heard anything quite like it. Tim had gone outside to get a different USB for charging and data transfer, so I was alone in the hallway. But after using this same potato camera at multiple locations, I actually discovered it has a factory defect. Sometimes when this camera runs for too long without stopping, or too long recording with infrared at night, it can make a weird gasping type sound on the internal components. While it's not that loud in person, when you review the footage, the audio is extremely loud. This is why I was unsure what I heard, and why this piece of evidence has been debunked. You definitely don't feel that draft anymore, so it's definitely a draft before. Yeah, probably that draft was probably from the storm. I'm assuming. that That's my guess. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate stairs? You know, I think I've only heard it once. Why don't we go pay a visit to Mr. Nasty? Show him who the real Mr. Nasty is. Still got cars going by. It's like the, the affectionate child book, Go the Fuck to Sleep. Oh, Mr. Nasty. It's right in here. What up, G? Back in here with the stinker. 
You've been nothing but talk. Actually, you haven't even been talk because you hadn't said shit to us. Mr. Nasty, are you here with us? Mr. Nasty! You want to see nasty or smell nasty? Well, you've come to the right man. I'll tell you one thing. I've been ripping ass in here all night. And I'm going to rip a nice hot fart right in here. You're going to be dethroned by that name of Mr. Nasty. That's right. Colby's going to take that name from you. That's right. I'm Mr. Nasty. Are you nothing but a wimp, Mr. Nasty? Are you intimidated by my ripping of the ass? Thought I heard something down the hall. What do you think you heard? Thought I heard like a banging sound, but it, it very well could just be the the building settling or creaking. But I thought I heard something. Which way? This way. Now there is a significant draft this way because this right here is completely open. So keep that in mind if we hear anything. It's very likely that it's the wind. Sure. Yeah, so I don't want to mistake anything for the wind. Um, so I've been breaking enough of it. <laughs> I'm on fire. All right, so it's currently 12.02 in the morning on mm -hmm. September, is it the 4th? Yeah. yeah, I think we're technically on the 4th now. Yeah, it's 12.02 in the morning. We have been doing investigations, including our initial walkthrough since about 7 p.m., so it was about five hours now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had some experiences, mm -hmm. a couple unexplainable, some that have been explained. I think currently, based upon our rating scale, yeah, I would probably put this at about a two spook. Yeah, for for me, it's it's about um, I would say probably a, a two out of five spooks. Um, that that's just me. Um, we may encounter more uh, as as the witching hour draws near. Now, but now, do keep in mind, we did hear from the owner of the hotel that. About one activity seems to stop after that, but we will continue investigations for them. Yeah. Hopefully I stop ripping ass so much <laughs> during the investigations. You know what? It's probably your ripping of the ass that is probably <laughs> keeping these ghosts away. Mr. Nasty is like, shit, this dude is nastier than my ass. I'm thought, a demon and he, this dude is nasty ass. I thought I was Mr. Nasty. <laughs> you are Mr. Nasty now. You should go live up in his room. You know what? That is my room now. It belongs that, to us. That's true. We we have claimed his room. So yeah. or we assume it to him. I don't know. I mean it could be Lilith. You never know. Lilith. Now if it's Lilith, we got lots to talk about. I'm a huge fan. You know, there's one more trick we haven't tried yet. What's that? We need to dress up. Oh shit. <laughs> you thought I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Time to bring out the big guns. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I don't feel like this bodes well for me. <laughs> what kind of fucking costumes you got for us? Hey, I got us period accurate costumes. What period? You know what? That's not important. Just know that they are accurate to the time. That gives me no inkling on what it could be. <laughs> the reason that we're getting in period accurate clothing is that some experts out there believe that if you dress in a way that spirits are more accustomed to seeing people in, they'll be more likely to come out and talk to you. While this could be an effective investigative tool, it's also a hilarious opportunity to always make Tim dress up in embarrassing clothing. Oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Are you making me wear? <laughs> what the hell is this? Am I Dorothy? <laughs> God damn it. 
Shaking a fit. <laughs> Word to the wise. This is why you don't allow him to choose the costumes for the period dress up. Because he gets to be a 1920s gangster and I'm fucking Dorothy from the goddamn Wizard of Oz. And doesn't have the decency to give me a fucking Toto to go with it. I legitimately look like the Grinch when he decides not to go to the party. Mm, mm, mm. All right, that's it. I'm not going. Got fucking Al Capone looking guy over here. I guess I should probably start talking in a more gangster terminology type way. But I don't really want to, you know? No? I guess I'll, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to talk like Morty on Rick and Morty. Yeah, should I start talking like Judy Garland? Oh, jeez. I don't think we're in war trace anymore. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. I guess then we're, we're in the 20s now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Are you trying to get me to dress up like this? You know, so this way maybe Emily will come because she can become like a motherly figure? You know, I, I didn't think about it at the time, but that's a very good point. I'm a motherly figure with a beard. Let's face facts. If you were a woman, <laughs> you would have a bit of a pituitary issue. Those haven't been moved, have they? I honestly don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so either. But when you said that, I was thinking the same thing. What about the pink bear or whatever? Yeah, I thought that was further back, but yeah. we'll have to review footage. Yeah. Emily, we're back in here to speak with you. Your mom's here. Remember Colby and me, it's Tim. Colby thought it would be nice to emasculate me, which is make me wear feminine attire when I don't wear feminine attire. I mean, not that we know of. <laughs> you... <laughs> you look... Ah, that's it. I'm not going. <laughs> You look... Brother? Yeah. You look... God damn it. <laughs> I look completely emasculated. I'm Judy Garland. <laughs> you should have just got me like a flapper girl outfit. <laughs> you look very... Woo! Judy! <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? There's another train coming? Dude, it's almost three in the morning. Enough with the trains. Don't talk back to me! Whether or not we catch any more potentially paranormal, like, evidence, do know one thing. This place absolutely drains batteries like crazy. 100%. If we, if we ever come back here, we are, like, bringing portable power banks, like, on a utility belt, like Batman. I actually would love that. That would be great. That would be... That's actually... Are you Batman next time? No, you're not going to be Batman. Kevin Superman, because he was like, uh, he was from the 20s. No. So I get to be Judy Garland again? Just might, you play your cards right. Yeah. Well, as long as those trains keep going by, we're not going to get shit up here. You want to check out the basement again? I can. I mean, we haven't been down there in a while. Yeah. Is there anyone down here? Are there any spirits down here that don't want us here? Once again, my name is Colby. And my name is Judy. <laughs> this is Judy Garland. Um, you may have seen his or her work uh, in a classic film known as The Wizard of Oz. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> are you... Are you British? <laughs> no. No, governor. Oh God, we're back to being Cockney again. While we were having fun in the basement, 
Our digital recorder and static night cam picked up these mysterious sounds in Emily's room on the third floor. While the first sound could be explained as possible thunder, during this time all the storms had already passed through the area, and none of our other devices picked up any sounds of thunder rumbling. The next two sounds are indistinct tapping or slight banging sounds. Due to them being so obscure, it's almost impossible to figure out what exactly is causing these noises. The last sound picked up is actually the most confusing, as it doesn't sound like anything in particular that you would hear on any given day. So what do you think? Is there a logical explanation for these sounds? Well, I mean, you think about it, Dorothy was a fucking criminal. How is Dorothy a criminal? She fucking murdered a woman! She, no! The whole house dropped on her. It was her house she was in. How? She wasn't controlling the house. It wasn't just like, oh, look, there's a witch there. I'm gonna land my fucking house on the witch. Oh yeah, that'll hold up in court. It just came down from a fucking tornado! Oh no, is it... Are we also gonna find it a little suspicious that the very next Wicked Witch that she came in contact with happened to melt? Uh, yeah, yeah. She seems to have a pattern of behavior with targeting wicked witches. All right, I, I'm not going to give you the murdering of the first witch, but I will give you the fact that she stole her fucking shoe. She did steal her shoe. She's a klepto. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, she robbed the dead body. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty fucked up. Yeah, I mean, she. Oh no, I, I crushed this lady. But, but boy, look at them shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are some nice shoes. Should I just like click my heels? Now click your big honking heels together. <laughs> no place like home. So you can go home to your dirt poor family. I live in the dust bowl, damn it. <laughs> Every fucking time I keep hitting that damn cable. I've hit it four times in a hey, row. Watch out, there's a cable there. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Captain Hindsight. <laughs> I think it's probably about time that we wrap it up. Okay. Do you have enough to go do Mr. Nasty's room one more time? Um. Oh. Oh, you brought the nasty down here. I sure did. We better leave. brought the nasty from the pasty down. Trust me, you're going to want to get in front of me. Yep, I'm going. Oh, God, it's following me. All right, making our last appearance in Mr. Nasty's room. And again, I am Mr. Nasty. We're about to give Mr. Nasty a blasty from the pasty. That's right, Judy. All right, Mr. Nasty. It's me, Judy. That title now belongs to me. <laughs> Judy. What? That's enough, Judy. I'm trying to get Mr. Nasty to talk to me. I'm Mr. Nasty. All right, Mr. Nasty, we're going to give you just a few minutes to say what you have to say. And then I'm going to rip a big old hot fart. He would shit. But that would be disrespectful to the uh, this wonderful establishment. That's been frowned upon. You can't just shit in public. I mean, we could get swifty. That's true. Aw, oh, jeez. Aw, oh, jeez. Aw, oh, jeez. Oh, just gonna make sure that we have everything that we need to get swifty. All right, Mr. Nasty. You gonna say something to us? Last chance, Mr. Nasty. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Mr. Nasty, don't you want to talk to Judy Garland? We do a 50s one. You know what? If you're going to dress me up in a dress again, just give me Marilyn Monroe. Don't give me any more ideas. Shit. I just may. Shit. <laughs> Mr. Nasty, this is your last chance. Do you have anything you want to say to us? All right. You had your chance, Mr. Nasty. The title of Mr. Nasty now belongs to me. I am Mr. Nasty. And I am Judy Garland. <laughs> <laughs> Who's sweating very profusely right now. Those old dresses don't breathe. Oh, they really don't.
Especially when they have to be tied in the back by a fucking shoelace. <laughs> All right, goodbye, everyone. It's been fun. All right, so it is about two minutes to four in the morning. We just finished up our investigation of the Walking Horse Hotel. Uh, based upon our rating scale, I would give it a 2.5 out of 5 because of the experience we had after our break. There's some audio that we need to comb through, but it's definitely something that is not easily explainable based upon the environment that we were in at the time. Um, so yeah, I give it a 2.5. And uh, what do you think, Colby? Well, um, I honestly... I would have to say, uh, yes, I would agree with the rating of 2.5. When we took a break at, at the halfway point, um, I was willing to give it a 2, possibly a 1. But uh, the, the, the activity definitely stepped up a notch, um, including you know the, the, the mentioned scratch on your arm and the audio file that uh, I can't find a way to debunk yet. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll find a way when the full episode drops, but we'll just have to wait and see. After spending the night seeing what the Walking Horse Hotel had to offer, Tim and myself both believe that this location backs up its claim as one of the most haunted locations in the state. As for the rest of you out there, whether the Walking Horse Hotel is haunted is entirely dependent on what you believe. All we can do is present the evidence that we found and the experiences we had to let our viewers make up their own minds. So, the Walking Horse Hotel, is it really haunted?